November about the Castlewood House. I just thought I'd say hello, follow up, um, and see if you were going to potentially sell that property here this spring during our best time of our market. Is that something you're going to be doing? Hey, good morning, Ms. Mr. and Ms. Young. It's Greg Sisson with Remax. Certainly nice meeting you Thursday afternoon at the home. Just following up, see if you had some time this weekend to, to make a decision. And uh, I'm eager to get started to help you get the home sold and uh, get you moved over to, to Brightwater. What I've learned is like probably the bulk of the business comes through lead follow-up. So right now I'm just I'm calling my hottest leads, people that, I, that I've already met with or that have a listing agreement that I can reel in and get, get the business. Um, and then my hottest leads beyond that that I'm attempting to set an appointment with that haven't already met with me. Uh, and then I'll go into calling some new people. But, but first thing, usually, I'm gonna try to get my hottest leads and, and reel them in, get, get listing agreements signed or get appointments and get in front of them or make a presentation over the phone. That's what we're doing right now. We've got a house in Myrtle Beach coming soon on Zillow. Um, we're promoting it in a pre-marketing campaign. chat to you here. I'm Stephanie Sisson. I'm the broker in charge here at Remax First Choice. Um, probably more importantly, I'm Greg's wife. Um, so long before I was involved in the business, of course, we've been married for um, almost 14 years. So now that I'm involved on the more professional level, it's made our, our relationship a lot more interesting. Um, but it's exciting to be a part of. We've had our Remax for a little over a year, and so just growing out some of that company has been very exciting. So Greg has been one of the top listing agents in the Grand Strand area for over 20 years, and so of course I'm super proud of him. He really specializes on listing property, negotiating that property for the best price possible, and really serving the client at a high level. And part of that service on a high level is we have an amazing team that we've put together on the, the staff or team end. Um, we have two closing coordinators and we have two people in our listing department and they just make life so much bit better for our customers. You, know, you, you can let them know, and I'm trying to let them know on the front end, that every showing there's feedback gathered that we we try to get and when we get it, we send you an email. We're not going to just wait and give you that every week, but I would just, if you're on the phone with these clients, I would just ask them, what's the best way for you us to communicate with you? How about you get any? I don't know how many I've got pending. I haven't okay. counted. I've got, I think, six and five or six on this morning. Um, no pendings this week. You mean no closings this no, week? I'm sorry, no closings this okay. week. Next week, I've got like six closing on Wednesday the 28th. Okay. The reason it's so important to have a closing coordinator, not only we're talking about a lot of deadlines and a lot of things that are very important to make sure that this gets closed um, properly, but we want to make sure that if you're a seller that you feel like your needs are taken care of completely, or if you're a buyer that your needs are taken care of completely. Hello, can you hear me? This is regarding Gable, the one you just turned in. I just saw your email and you're saying the documents were in dot loop. I do not see the ones that were initialed by the seller since that's marked through, even though I know it's because it's a license, the name of the licensee, we, it's still a change. So we'll need to have that initialed by all parties. So no matter if you're a buyer or a seller, with our office, you have someone that's in your corner of the entire process. Did you make soup for today? No, I cheated. I made bread. Well, I didn't make bread. I bought bread. So today we're going to have a themed lunch and we have it once a month. Today's is soup. So I'm interested in taste testing some things. Ooh, doesn't that look good though? Look at that now. Katie's tortellini. Mm. I might have to take some of that home. But it's a great opportunity to get together with everyone around the table and just kind of relax and hang out and get to know each other just a little bit better every month. And it seems like no one wants to miss it, so that's great. It means it's you know a fun thing to do.
First of all, I want to be able to pay my house off so my kids have a great house to come to later on when I go. All right. I want a decision to love, forgive, grow, and grow older together with my wife. Uh, I want to do a family trip to Hawaii. We love to get together once a year and share our dream boards. And this dream board can be basically any shape or size, but what we're asking people to do are tell us one thing that they would like to be, one thing that they would like to do, and then maybe a place that they would like to go. So some examples of those dreams may be um, that they want to take singing lessons, or they want to commit to reading a book a month, or they may have a favorite pocketbook that they want to purchase, and that's something that's out there as a, a easy but simple goal that they can put out there, or maybe they have a big goal where they want to go to Europe or something. So just sharing some of those dreams with each other, it just builds excitement and um, fellowship, and it's just a, a fun time. is kind of a picture you know we're still in the middle of trying to design our house and we want it to be very simple but accommodate people to come in and out we love to entertain but not fancy and so I kind of like this picture because it's very in and out you know um, you can kind of see the outdoors it's probably not in the budget right now but I'd love to have a pool um, because I, I kind of think that's the, the icing on the cake if we could have people in the pool and all that that'd be really fun this is my little funny thing. Everybody was like, what is this? But um, in our family, it's pretty much, you know how you have these limiting beliefs or these things that are like passed down, like our family doesn't sing. That's just something like no one knows how to sing. Well, I've always believed it. Then I should not be able to sing, and I probably can't. However, I would love to take voice lessons. Um, my kids are really interested. They are so funny. They're like, Mom, well, we can sing. And I'm like, well, good for you, you know? <laughs> Like your face. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never been on a cruise ship at all. Wow. And so I, I like the idea of a European cruise, or we're talking about a Disney cruise maybe in a we year or two. We should all go. Take the whole thing. A cruise. Yeah. 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 What's our goal? What's our goal? <laughs> <laughs> One year. I'm, I'm going to go the sports route first. Cause I'm like Matt. I'm, I'm a sports fanatic. I love sports. Um, I put, um, this, is the, uh, this is Boston. And, th and this is Chicago, and this is Yankee Stadium. I've never been to any of those uh, ballparks. Um, this is the Masters. I've never been either, and I've, I've, I've thought about that there and talked go. about that for years. I'd like to go on like the Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday before when it's more laid back. I just want to walk that course. Um, watched it. I mean, I, I can remember on Sunday afternoon before we went to choir practice uh, at church, Jack Nicholas in 1986, me and my dad watching the Golden Bear win at like 46 years old in 1986, and that was a big deal. Um, this is a Tesla, which is is definitely our house is is the the goal it's, right that's now. That's nowhere on the Tesla. That. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually like really loved what I'm driving. I'm not interested in a Tesla right now, but I think one day it's on there. By the way, the dream board is a dream board, right? It can be something dream. that yeah, is right. could be a 10 year goal. Um, this. We moved to Myrtle Beach in 82. It's kind of an interesting story because my dad was a golfer. His buddies from Kentucky in the mid 70s, late 70s, traveled to Myrtle Beach on golf trips. And uh, one day when he was on a golf trip, somebody told my dad, Gary, hey Gary, you'd be pretty good in real estate. And at the time, my father had drug stores that he was a pharmacist and owned a couple drug stores in Kentucky. And uh, he decided to sell the drug stores, moved to Myrtle Beach, and he did that and moved us here in 1982. And my dad got into real estate. So, so that for me was fifth grade when I moved to Myrtle. And so I've been here for, you know, ever since 82. I'm not showing it to a client. I just need, for the owner, I told him I'd go in today and make sure that he had a handyman go in and do some little work for him. Okay. We're here at Oceanfront uh, Condo at the Camelot by the Sea, and out of state owner from Tennessee has it on the rental program, uh, wants me to list the property. Came in here about three weeks ago. The place needed some, some fix ups, it needed some handyman work. Uh, so it's been rented, got the handyman in, now I'm coming back just kind of checking the old photos, making sure everything was done, and so we're ready to, ready to get this one on the market and get it photographed so it looks a lot better. And so in 
Next, we're going down to Myrtle's Inlet to uh, Woodlake Village, which 55 and over communities right now are very much in demand. And so I'm headed down to Woodlake Village to list a three bedroom, two bath home uh, for around 210,000 with a garage. So we're on our way. Yeah, so I have the good fortune of helping a lot of families that are dealing with a, a probate or an estate property, meaning the daughter, the son, a sibling, most of the time out of state that have a property here, their loved one passed and they're the personal representative or the executor of the estate. So I, I have the good fortune of helping a lot of those folks and oftentimes there's navigating between emotion, uh, business decisions they have to make, arranging clean outs and handymen and carpet cleaning and estate sales. So there's, it's a service that we're able to offer, but it also takes some gentleness and some compassion, I think, from the agent to kind of understand all the different emotions that the family are going through. It's a very difficult time, but at the end of the day, they gotta get the property sold, so. Okay. Yes. All right, hold on, I'm gonna transfer you to her. Are you trying to call her? We're giving the seller a credit, not the buyer. Do you understand, you got that? Okay, because the buyer's getting the, Gotcha, okay. 662.5. That, that's it. See ya, bye. I'd say 85% of my, 80% of my day is talking to people. You know, whether it's, you know, in the mornings on the phone, doing my sales calls, you know, lead follow-up, talking to new leads. But then afternoons, I'm, I'm getting listings or I'm dealing with prospects or clients. So negotiating contracts. I mean, my, if, if I lost my voice, I'm out of business for a while. So it's, uh, it's constant. It is. And I'd say the other 15 to 20% of my day is probably talking to my staff. So between, you know, talking to my clients and talking to my staff. Yeah. When I get home, um, you know, I, I don't talk as much. <laughs> get home for the day. That's for sure. Greg is really funny. Um, most people don't know that about him because when it comes to business, he is all business. They're looking at, can I make this move? Can I go, can I um, upsize or can I move to another state? What is it, what am I going to be able to net in my pocket when this is over with? So he is taking on that um, and helping them through that process and he's very serious. But what a lot of people don't see is he's hilarious. Um, and so in the office, uh, there have been times where even the staff have been a little shocked at, you know, his antics of you know, <laughs> jumping on the trampoline or doing something and they're like, what in the world? But um, it makes my life a lot better because he's so funny. So what's really interesting about real estate is the business of real estate is in a complete emotional roller coaster. I mean, deals come together, deals fall apart, it's up and down constantly. So, you know, managing that can be a challenge. But at the end of the day, you keep your head down, you work hard, you go home, and thankfully I get to go home to my family and it makes the ups and downs and all of the, the chaos of real estate 100% worth it.